how to cancel your upcoming trip and get a refund, eight tips. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informed, and entertaining. This video I'm doing by special request because I've gotten these questions over and over again. First, Chris, what do you think my chances are of getting a refund for my upcoming trip? Or two, Chris, how do I get my money back for a flight the airline has canceled? Both those questions I will answer in this video. Some airlines and hotels have been really generous with their refund policies. Others, though, are in survival mode and are basically refusing to issue any cash refunds, only offering flight vouchers for flights in the future for airlines that might not even be in business. Travelers are experiencing call volumes that are heavy, often hours trying to call the airlines, and so I'll give you some other tips than just having to call the airlines and being on hold for 14 hours. Tip number one, go online and read your airlines, hotel, cruise lines, refund, and cancellation policy. Many companies have issued special refund and cancellation policies just for the current pandemic outbreak, so make sure to check out those two, and they've been changing almost on a daily basis. So read up on that, find Find out what is covered and what isn't covered so that you know what you can actually work around and work with for that particular company. You also should read up on the refund policies of the countries that your flight was traveling from or to. For example, in the United States and the European Union, you are eligible for a full refund if the airline cancels your flight for any reason. A cash refund, not a credit. If you know what the government rules are, then that gives you some leverage with the airline if you do have to talk to them later. Tip number two, try refunding or canceling online. Many airlines and travel companies that didn't used to offer online cancellation and refund options now are. Why? Because their call centers are inundated and they can't handle it, so their IT teams have added new capabilities to cancel online. So check that out before you call and help avoid the frustration. Now you might have checked a week ago and there wasn't a cancellation option with your company that you're flying or traveling with, but there might be today. If you can't find a way to cancel on the website, well, try their mobile app. Some companies you can only cancel on the mobile app because that's the team that they had that implemented it and they hadn't implemented it on the website yet. Can't find anything in their mobile app? Try filling out a customer service form on the website requesting a refund due to the cancellation. Can't find a customer service form on the website? Try looking up their Twitter account. Try looking up their Facebook account. Try looking up their email address. Try finding any other way to contact them rather than calling them. For a recent hotel at a Marriott, I emailed them and a week later they canceled it and issued me a full refund. It did take a little while and actually I never got a response to my email, but they did cancel my reservation and give me my money back. Tip number three, if you do have to call them, try calling during off hours. If you're calling a US-based airline, well, try calling them at 1 a.m. Los Angeles time. Chances are they're not getting many calls from US people at that time. If you still can't get through to the US numbers, try calling some of their international call centers. For example, United Airlines has a Singapore call center. Sometimes you can find the international call center numbers on the company's website sites. Other times you might have to dig a little bit, like you can search for American Airlines international phone numbers in Google and get various international call center numbers. Now, but you might be saying, Chris, it costs a lot of money to call long distance to Singapore or the Philippines. Well, then you should use something like Skype where you can make long distance calls for only like two cents a minute. The two cents a minute you spend on that call might be well worth saving the three hours on hold time that you'd spend on the US line. If it's a hotel that you're trying to cancel, well, try calling the hotel's direct number instead of the general reservations line. And if the hotel's busy or they don't answer, well, leave them a voicemail. That was how I canceled another hotel reservation I was staying at. Nobody would pick up the phone in the hotel's local reservations. I left them a voicemail. Two days later, canceled full refund. Now, if you booked your flight, hotel, cruise via a third party like a travel agent or Expedia or Booking.com, well, chances are you're gonna have to call them directly and adhere to their cancellation policies. This is actually where I've heard travelers having the most difficulty, particularly with travel agents and cruises, not offering very flexible cancellation policies. Because the travel agents or these smaller websites, small companies, they're hurting too, and so they don't wanna give up all of their revenue. 
Tip number four, wait. If your trip isn't until May or June, there's no rush to cancel it right now. There's tons of people that are rushing to cancel trips they have within the next three days, in the next two weeks. Let all those people get through to cancel their things and you can get through when the current crush of people has subsided. And also in general, airline cancellation and refund policies are getting more generous, generally not less generous. And so actually waiting a few weeks might help you you with a refund because the airline might have extended their policy to that or they might have proactively canceled your flight and given you a refund because you might have been traveling to a destination that's closed even for flights leaving your country or going to that country. Tip number five, when you do finally talk to a phone agent, be nice, be humble, even be pitiful. Don't be arrogant, don't be rude, don't be bossy, don't be angry. None of those things will help you get what you want. You want to make the telephone agent want to help you. And the way you do that is by being humble, by being kind, by being thankful, and yes, perhaps even being a little bit pitiful. Swallow up your pride and make that agent want to help you. Make them want to give you that refund. Make them feel that they are making your day and they're really helping you out by giving you your money back. And definitely thank them. Thank them for what they're doing. Thanks for answering the phone. Tell them that you know times have been stressful for them. They'll really appreciate that and that will make them want to help you. Tip number six, this is a don't instead of a do. Don't accept credit if what you want is a refund. Many airlines, including American Airlines, their first step is to offer you a voucher, not a refund. And if while you're on the phone, you accept that voucher for a future flight, that's it. Your chance of getting a refund pretty much entirely out the window. Now, some airlines are trying to sweeten the deal. American Airlines in particular will say, hey, we'll give you 20% extra if you take a voucher. But if you're not sure whether you're going to be traveling over the next 12 months or not, then you might not really want that voucher. You might want your money back because that'll give you more flexibility to fly maybe another airline if they have cheaper rates. And this is also where that information that you read in tip number one, where I told you to go on your country's websites to learn about the legal rules, for example, the US and EU refunds, you can say something, not in a Mr. Know-it-all way, but something in a kind of naive way where you allude to, well, but I think I've heard that flights from the US are eligible for refunds if they're canceled, so can't I get a refund under that policy? You know, be generic about it. Don't say something like, well, you know, per US regulation, blah, 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 and if not, I'm gonna call my lawyer. I mean, they really won't wanna help you at that point. Tip number seven, if you're really not getting anywhere with the telephone agent, well, hang up and call again. You know, these airlines, hotels, cruise companies, they have ton of phone agents. Phone agents are not often consistent, and so the current one that you're talking to might not help you, but if you hang up and you call again, you might get someone who does help you. How many times you want to hang up and call again, that is up to you, but I have found hanging up and calling again is always an option and often yields different results. And when I say hang up and call again, I don't mean be rude. I don't mean be like, I'm not talking to you anymore and I'm gonna call back. Just if you're not getting anywhere, thank that agent for their time, hang up and call back again. And when you call again, remember this new agent is a new person you're talking to. So just start your story all over again. Humble, pitiful, ask for help, you know the drill. Tip number eight, none of these things worked. Well, then as a last resort, you can dispute the charge with your credit card company. The reason why this is a last resort is banks typically require that you show proof that you have tried to work with the party to work things out before you file a dispute. So all of these phone calls, emails, you will want to have documented times, things you've said, who you've talked to, what the policies are on the website, what the policies are for the country, and those are all the things you'll need to provide to the credit card company to help in your dispute. And if the facts are in your case, then the bank may very well side in your case and issue a refund and a charge back to the travel provider. Now, once you've got your refund, and I hope that you do, if you're looking for some ways to spend it, and it won't be on travel right now, because we're not really all traveling at the moment, you can watch my video right here about my everyday carry. These are the things like my suitcase, my cameras, and all the stuff I travel around with. Now might be a good time to up your travel game with some new equipment. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in this video.